I remember working for uh, PBS in Kansas City way back in the day, and I was fortunate enough to have a meeting with a, a reporter, a resident reporter that KTBT had in town, and he was a Pulitzer Prize winner. And at the time, I was really almost nervous and awestruck. I was like, wow, I'm in the same room as this guy who's won a you know, Pulitzer Prize for his reporting. He's an older guy, and it was just intimidating. I was just some young kid who had taught himself how to make videos, and, and you know, I was doing some work for, for PBS, and I thought, like, wow, this guy, this guy's serious. Like, I don't want to come off like an idiot. And I remember that because many years later now, I think about that, that Pulitzer Prize and how people get prizes for reporting in journalism or how awards are designated for pieces of reporting. And after spending a few years in journalism, I can kind of tell you it's a bit rubbish. And it's a bit rubbish in the same way that Oscar awards are a bit rubbish for Hollywood, right? Like, what is journalism? Is it subjective or is it objective? Is it a hard science or a soft science? Is it mathematics, economics, history, literature? Where does journalism fall in terms of objectivity? Now, journalists often like to masquerade as being objective and telling the truth and being a, you know, a record of fact, but that's often not the case, right? A lot of the news you read day to day is simply a collation of other news stories or a contextualization of things that have been reported elsewhere by other people. Maybe adding a little bit here, adding a little bit there. Um, in some ways, journalism is collaborative without it intending to be collaborative. But that gets us back to awards. So why I want to talk about awards is because there was two awards given, one to the New York Times and another to, to the Washington Post about Russia, about the you know Russia collusion stories and all that's been reported around the Mueller investigation over the last two years. Now, as the Mueller investigation has been finished and Barr has said, well, there's no collusion and there's no obstruction of justice and we can all move on with our lives. And regardless of how you may feel about that, the, 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 the major narrative amongst the press and the media is that there's been, you know, Russian collusion and there, there's been obstruction of justice and the reports and the, the, the daily podcasts and the daily press briefings and the newsletters have always been about little scoops, little rumors about Trump doing this with Russia or Trump's family doing this with Russia or Trump's campaign advisor doing this with Russia. And yet it all seemed to come to naught. So why do they still get awards? What were they exactly right about? Hmm? Well, the way journalism is judged within its own community is a little bit technical. In some ways, it's the thought and methodology that went into it rather than the result. And I think a good analogy for this is that, like, you can hire a construction crew, and they can be the best construction crew in the world, and they can go out and build you a road. And you're like, I want you to build, you know, I want you guys to build me a road because I want to get to from point A to point B really efficiently, right? I need to get there really efficiently, and I want to do it. I want to do it properly. So I'm going to hire a construction crew, and they're going to build me this road. And the construction crew comes, and they they take measurements, they think about it, they consult with other architects and other designers and industrial designers, and you know, cement mixers, and they hire the best person for every piece of the job. And they go out there and they lay down the concrete and they, they pave it perfectly and they, they, they draw on the dotted lines, the nice yellow lines, which is beautiful. It's a silky smooth road for miles. And they come back to you after six months and say like, hey, look at this thing we've done. And you go out there and you look at it and you admire the craftsmanship and their methodology. And you go, guys, that's great, but I want the road built this way. And all you did was build it the exact opposite wrong direction. That's a bit of an analogy for journalism. That's kind of how journalism is judged. It's judged on how well the real road is built, not whether it's built in the right direction. But wait a minute, isn't the point of journalism to get you know things right or wrong? And here's where I want to use the road analogy again. So when you look along this nice road they built in the totally wrong direction that you wanted to go, there's not a single crack in it, not a fraying of the concrete, not a pot mark. Everything they've done has been meticulous. They've made no accidents. They followed protocol perfectly. And so when you look at the road, there's no inherent flaws. Everything holds together. It's just in the wrong direction. And that's sometimes just the nature of journalism. But journalism looks at that road, or at least the media internally, and they say like, no, they followed protocol perfectly. They you know, had the right sources. They double checked their facts. They reported on it extensively. They called around for references. They followed up. They asked question after question after question. They had this source, and then they had that source verified by another source, and this person gave them this on the record, and you know, th this piece of information on the record, and then they, they compiled it perfectly, and nothing they actually reported to mean that 
they did misleading. Nothing, nothing there. They reported the facts exactly as they got them. They contextualized it exactly the information as they received it. Problem is, the information was wrong a lot of the time, right? Or the, the sources weren't in the right direction, or the leads were wrong, or the information was bad. Now, the reporters may have reported it faithfully and, and dutifully, and they may have reported the gossip truthfully. This is exactly what the person whispered in my ear, and they reported it back out. The problem is what the person whispered in your ear wasn't true. <laughs> and so you judge journalism by the quality of which, you know, the report has been whispered in the ear and how, how dutifully they've carried it out, and not whether, well, wait a minute, did the person stop to think like, is what they're whispering in my ear actually right? No. It's just like, no, they, they dutifully did the art of journalism. And so that's how the New York Times and the Washington Post wind up with awards for journalism that took the public in a totally wrong direction. Anyway, I hope that gives some insight into how the media once again views itself and how it judges itself and often kind of how awards are given. Something to think about. Anyway, if you want to watch another video, you can click around. Also, if you want to suggest a topic, I'd love to humor it. We can talk about it. See you guys tomorrow. Bye.